I'm here today with uh, Carl Colby, who is the director of a new film uh, called The Man Nobody Knew. It's a biography of his father, William Colby, who was the legendary CIA spymaster, director of the CIA, uh, and uh, uh, quite a public figure who was embroiled in many of the controversies around the agency uh, going back to the 70s. Um, let's get right into it. Uh, Carl, why did you decide to make this film about your father? You know, I'd always uh, made profiles as a filmmaker. I did a profile of people like Frank Gehry and Willem de Kooning, and, and you'd think, well, why didn't I do a profile of my dad? And, but, you know, when you would come to very personal questions or anything more substantive than whatever the flavor of the week was, he would just sort of put up a shield and say, well, that's your department, friend. You know, you, I don't go into those sort of treacherous emotional waters. So I was always a bit frustrated and didn't do it. And then he died, and a few years later I was watching the coverage of 9-11 uh, two hours after the towers fell, and Wolf Blitzer asked James Baker, well, uh, how did this happen? And Baker said, I traced this back directly to the uh, CIA hearings with Church and Pike in the 70s when Colby basically revealed all the family jewels and the CIA's ability to do clandestine activities just collapsed. I was kind of stunned. I thought, God, there's relevance. And then two weeks later, I see pictures of uh, CIA operatives wearing beards and turbans and riding horses and camels with the Northern Alliance. And I thought, well, that looks like OSS. So I, start, I thought, well, maybe there's a story here. Um, and now that he's gone, maybe I can approach it from a different way. Did you know uh, that your father was a spy when you were growing up, when you were a kid? It was pretty funny. I, I used to think he just worked for the embassy. And I was on the diving board of the Cirque Sportif in Saigon, which was sort of a fun club we'd all go to. And one f a friend of mine on the diving board said, uh, you know, your dad's a spy. I said, no, nah, he works for the embassy. And he said, no, 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 he's CIA. And he jumped off into the pool. And that night I asked my dad, I said, well, you know, my friend Derek said, you work for CIA, are, are you a spy or something? And he goes, you know, let's just keep that our little secret. And from then on, I felt like I was part of the team. You know, I had a job to do. He had a mission and I had a job, which was to protect him and, and the rest of us. Do you think he went over to the dark side at some point? I think he knew the dark side. I think he also had a, a great capacity to uh, absorb pain and to uh, inflict pain. One of his best friends, Stan Temko, who used to run Covington and Burling here, was his best man in Columbia, and said that you could be talking to him like this and you could be sawing off his left arm and he wouldn't flinch. I, I think he didn't go to the dark side in the sense of became evil or embraced um, embraced evil. I think he got down and fought the way the enemy was fighting him and no holds barred. So if it required uh, taking people out, so be it. Senator Symington is grilling my father and for his confirmation hearing, says CIA director, and asks him, uh, well, how uh, do you characterize the Phoenix program? You, you, were, you were basically implementing the program and, and there were there's targets. And he said, no, no, and how did you count it? How did you quantify it? He said, you know, so many people eliminated. He said, no, not eliminated, killed. Killed. There's no euphemism about it. That's a direct quote. So it's going to take you back a little bit. You know, you're, you're talking to somebody who has no qualms about. This is war. But this is war, exactly. Um, what were the family jewels? This was something that came to be known and when he, during the hearings he, uh, before Congress, uh, after he became director, I guess in 1973, uh, there had been a lot of disclosures about CIA activities in the Nixon, uh, before Nixon resigned. Um, and uh, the result of these, of these hearings was that a lot of activities of the CIA, w which had remained secret, became disclosed, and your father was very much a part of that process of, right. of, of disclosing the, the, right. these secrets. Um, what did we learn? I think uh, what we learned is what we've been up to since the early 50s, with a veneer of, of you know, lend-lease and care packages and the two handshakes, and that what was going on underneath all this was a lot of skullduggery and a lot of uh, attempted coups. And my producer, David Johnson, went to Yale and showed up at one of those 8 o'clock sort of breakfast meetings with you know, the dignitary, and the dignitary was my father, and they said, well, this is the former director of the CIA, and, and the Yale students immediately raised their say, how many people did you assassinate? And he said, well, we only, you know, we never succeeded in assassinating anybody, but we tried 16 times. At the end of the day, what did you learn about your father? 
I think he was a soldier. He believed in authority, and he believed in America. And even though he probably had one of the bleakest, harshest views of the world that I'd ever seen, um, he had this kind of boyish sort of enthusiasm for for life and for uh, for America. And he believed in the character of people. And so, no matter all the dark darkness and the uh, and the things I'll never know about, uh, I think but he was a think good man. You think that. Uh, he thought America could make the world a better place. Absolutely. I think he just unqualified thought that America. He thought we were overreaching, though, by the time he was got on in age in the 70s. He thought we were overreaching. He was, became an advocate for disarmament, and uh, which now William Perry and George Shultz and many people of his generation are, you know, cash, all bets, you know, all, all money to the front. Let's, let's just disarm. Right. There's that famous quote, what is it, that when you're, uh, Clemenceau says that if you're not a liberal when you're young, you have no heart, and if you're not conservative when you're old, you have no head. But you know, I think he felt he'd done so much fighting. There'd been so much war. I interviewed Senator Inouye, who you probably know, who the oldest serving senator now, and obviously a Medal of Honor winner and lost his arm. And, and he said, you, he said, your father and I, we knew blood. And it was a chilling thing to say, and I think that's why both my father and, in a way, have a don't have a braggadocio idea about war. They know the cost. And so, dissimilar to what we'd heard in the last administration. Full, full steam ahead.